Welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights, where we invite leading minds and game changers with incomparable experience and unique knowledge to come on our light-hearted yet informative show to help business leaders and the wider community to gain insights, grasp opportunities, and see behind and beyond spotlights so we can get the full picture, dream bigger, and achieve more together. My name is Herman Hu, and Friday Beyond Spotlight is honoured and pleased to present to you our guest today, Honourable Kenneth Falk Kai Kong. Mr. Falk is a member of the Legislative Council of Hong Kong, representing the sports, performing arts, culture and publication functional constituencies. He is also a national committee member of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. He is also a vice president of the Hong Kong Sports Federation and Olympic Committee. Welcome, Kenneth. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Kenneth, you are an ever supporter of sports and you even married an Olympic champion. Yes. You are the eldest third generation of the famous Falk family who has contributed so much to sports in Hong Kong, China and internationally. In your view, how does sports play a role in our society? I think it's quite an interesting question. I think it's mm. also important to look at the history, look at our country. You know, throughout decades, sports has played an important role, not just in one sense, not in the sense of just getting medals, serving as a bridge and a connection to the world from the ping pong uh, diplomacy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. moving forward to, to, to 50 years of normalization with the, the Western world and beyond. And then we move through a period where, you know, our economy and our whole society is rising up the ranks, so-called. And sports played a very big role. Remember the Olympics in 08? It served actually not just as a competition. It serves as a message to tell people the door is open. This is a way to show the world China is, you know, powerful. China is on the rise. We welcome everyone. And but now, moving on uh, nearly 20 years, besides the competition prowess besides competition medals now we see in the 14 five-year plan what's more important is mass participation community participation to be a really strong sporting nation we not only need medals we need more young people to participate themselves in sports and this will lead to the business part where sports industry and business can blossom so you know coming back to Hong Kong you know uh, I think very important uh, role sports can play Look at the recent Olympic results, right? Um, I unfortunately could not go to Tokyo because of the pandemic, but I was in Hong Kong. I was at a mall with yeah, all, all were, different, yeah. you know, people of all walks of life, witness yeah. Zhang Galong get a gold medal. And, you know, Hong Kong's been through tough times in the past few years, especially the pandemic. And now to see people out and about, to see people rally behind our sporting hero, that's something else. Do you see sports as an integral part of work, life and play in Hong Kong? I've really noticed that the young people now, they care a lot more about quality of life, quality right. of life. It's not just about work, but work-life balance. And part of life is sports. Hong Kong, although it's a compact city, mm -hmm. but there are facilities, although not enough, we hope for more. But I think everyone use our waterfront. We use our... Um, limited resources to make the best out of Hong Kong. I, I, I tell you a few examples. I, I, I speak to a few rowers. Mm -hmm. They love coming to Hong Kong. Why? Okay. Because there's no other city in the world where you can start off the race in the harbour with skyscrapers, but 20 minutes you turn around the south, it's green, lush and mountains. Okay. So this is only Hong Kong can offer. Where in the world can you go hiking and trekking? You start mm -hmm. from the city and you walk up one hour and then you're in in the country park. This is what Hong Kong is about, and this is what you know attracts athletes and sports lovers alike to Hong Kong. Yeah, what are the uh, unique advantages of Hong Kong's uh, one country, two system? How do you promote Hong Kong to the international sports industry that Hong Kong is the best city to promote brands to the 1.4 billion population in China and vice versa? I think when you talk about one country, two system, I think the, the, the immediately we, we can connect to is the Greater Bay Area. Greater Bay Area, immediately extends Hong Kong's reach and population to 70 million people from 7 million. So I can envision the future, we can, Hong Kong can bridge the mm -hmm. world and get more hosting opportunities, uh, different uh, sporting events, conventions, and, and, and what, whatever may be, trade shows even. But we reach out to the Greater Bay Area, even the Greater 
uh, China market. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a it's a sound business proposal for a lot of the inter international federations, a lot of international mm -hmm. sporting you know agencies to really put their eye on Hong Kong. I think it it will break barriers. You know there there are difficulties to overcome. Mm -hmm. You know currency, different rule of law, different uh, system, but. Sports, I think, is a good yeah. platform to I'm break sure over through. time. All these will be become history. Yes, so 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 I think it's a great prospect for mm -hmm. for whoever is wanting to you know take a share of the China market <laughs> in sports, and it's rising. Mm -hmm. The general market for sports in our country is rising by many factors. So this is the opportunity we should be looking for. Yeah, I think um, the aim is generally uh, for the sports industry in China to reach. Uh, five percent of GDP, yeah, and this is a big number. We can do the maths. Wow, you know, five percent at the moment. U.S. Uh, sports industry is five percent of uh, the U.S. GDP. Right. Europe is about two, two point five three. Uh, Hong Kong at the moment is about one, one point one, one to two. One to two. One to two. So mainland China, mainland, the expectation is five, and I think Hong Kong has a lot of work to do. Yeah. and I hopefully Hong Kong, you know, with the government support, we should also put much more emphasis on. Not just events, but how to develop the sporting industry, yeah, sports industry to to increase the GDP percentage of sports in Hong Kong, and we can play a role for for the mainland. Well, it seems that uh, it takes a lot of money to support and promote sports. Do you see any new business models for sports industries to become profitable, or just relying on the sponsorships? Well, I think sponsorship will always be the cornerstone of many mm -hmm. sporting events, as you see worldwide. I think sp sponsorship is a big part of it. But what we are looking at or what sports should be looking at is diversify. Cannot put all eggs in one basket, right? As we see COVID now. COVID oh, yeah. has changed the landscape quite a lot. You know, sponsors will calculate and they will see how much reach they will be getting. So sponsorship will be one thing, but changing the mode of business is, is another factor. And what I'm saying here is merchandising, IP products, and even way of engaging fans. The traditional TV broadcasting is this the only way? Mm -hmm. I'm sure the Olympic movement, Olympic account, uh, uh, the IOC is also looking at different ways. Now they're developing a lot about the Olympic Channel. I'm sure in the future they're trying to create contents themselves and to sell to okay. customers directly without going through TV stations. So does does it pay? Yes, it does. And I think on the flip side of the coin, let's look at it from the government's angle. Mm -hmm. Take the recent uh, Singapore F1. Actually, from the government's angle, it's not the F1 events that make money. It's the secondary treasury spending in tourism yeah. that helps the Singapore economy. So Herman, back to home, I, I, us in the sporting community, we are very excited about the new bureau. Right? Something right. that we've asked for many, many years. It used to be under home affairs. Now finally, we have a dedicated bureau for culture and sports. So I think moving forward is culture, sports and tourism. So in terms of government policy, how do you integrate the two? Mm -hmm. I think it's important. You know, we cannot look at sports just by itself. How the rugby seven bring in tourism? And we should calculate it as a whole, not, a, not by its separate bits. Otherwise, there will never be enough incentive for individual events in the government's point of view. So True. this is something that yeah. we're pushing very hard. You know, I know people who are dedicated every year, they book their flight one year in advance to come to the rugby sevens. Mm -hmm. So these are these are events that Indeed. we need to grow and have and use as our name card for Hong Kong on the international stage. Uh, we all know that the uh, Kai Tak Sports Park is going to be ready in 2024. Not only do we have more facilities to develop uh, sports culture here, mm -hmm. it also enables us to uh, host mega events. What mega events uh, do you expect uh, to secure in the near future? We do want to bid for more um, yeah. uh, football events. Okay. I think for, for, our, for China. Are I think we going to have World Cup here? Well, this is a <laughs> big question. I think um, in in China's uh, uh, point of the mm -hmm. whole country's point of view, I think definitely World Cups on site. Hopefully, we can uh, China as a as a hosting nation can get yeah. the World Cup, and of course uh, by then, if it happens, I'm sure Hong Kong would be able to host a few big events uh, coming to Hong Kong. So this will be again. This is important for the Greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. This is why we need to successfully deliver the 2025. All China games. I, I always mention 
Tai Tak should not just be a Hong Kong feature, should not just be Hong Kong Stadium. It should be the Greater Bay's newest stadium. You know, how can the Kai Tak connect with different stadiums within the Greater Bay Area? Okay. We have a lot of good stadiums right. in Shenzhen, oh, yeah, in Guangzhou. You know, can they come together mm -hmm. and together bid for some big events? So they can have a tour. Ah, good idea. You know, so the, when the sports team come, when when a Premier League team comes, they're not just coming to one market. Mm -hmm. They're going to a big market. What advice would you give to young people who want to be a professional athlete? Uh, I, I sit on a panel every year and judge young uh, uh, potential athletes. And I always get the same question. They are 16, 70 year old. They're faced with many choices, right? They are, have to take DSC, they have to go to university, but they're passionate about sports. But a lot of them see a choice between one or the other. But actually, I've seen successful athletes be able to do both at the same time. And this takes dedication and work. I'm not lying to you. They get up very early, they study, they train very hard, and they do the breakthrough and they get you know, best of both worlds. So if you're serious and passionate about sports, keep at it, keep the fire burning. I'm sure Hong Kong, no matter uh, the society, the ecosystem, we could support you for you to become a professional athlete and have the chance to represent Hong Kong. Well, it's wonderful, Kenneth. Thank, Thank you. you. We will be right back after this break. Welcome back to Friday Beyond Spotlight. We have with us today the Honorable Kenneth Fokai Gong, who is Kenneth behind the spotlight? What made him who he is today? For this segment of a Beyond Spotlight story, we ask our guests to bring along an item that is especially dear to them with significant meaning that personifies their Lion Rock spirit and has helped to shape who they are today. Kenneth, could you show us the item and share your unique story with us? Yeah, sure, Herman. Um, I thought a lot about this and, you know, for myself, uh, family is very important. And to Indeed. a certain extent, my family, uh, especially my wife, has shaped who I am today. We've been together for many years. So I brought something very special. Uh, as she's an athlete, I brought her gold medals from the Olympics uh -huh. from 2008. Your wife is Guo Jingjing. Yes. And uh, she won the total of uh, four Olympic gold medals. Yes, from 2008 from, yeah. and also 2004 Athens as well. Why I brought it here today is not about the medals themselves. So many people only see the moment where they get presented the medals or the moment they cross the finishing line. They don't actually see the moments they sweat, they bleed, oh, yeah. they crash, they, the moment where they're in despair, they want to give up. These medals, I think we should see a deeper story. Mm -hmm. I think it's also responsible for society and people to understand the Lion Rock spirit behind getting these medals. It's not simply, oh, he got four medals, she gets six. It's not a simple comparison as such. Mm -hmm. So for us, especially in sports, it's a good reminder what we need to do and how we need to encourage our athletes, not just, you know, just by looking at how many medals they get, but make sure they're Spirit, the spirit, their stories can be told. Yeah. I always say this, um, the journey is more important yeah. right, than just the results. Well, Kenneth, I know family is very important to us, especially yes. to you. How do you bring this Lion Rock spirit into your family? I think family and Olympics is very important to our family and it's always been the you know topic of conversation, even with my father. You you know my father very <laughs> yeah, well. I so also, I think also your grandfather. Yeah, also well. my grandfather. So I think me being a, a young well, uh, not young, not so young <laughs> anymore, uh, being a parents or new parents with three kids, I think we keep this tradition and we keep this culture. I think um with a few examples, I mean recently with uh, China uh, Beijing Winter Olympics and also different sporting, various, uh, various sporting events. You know, we keep them exposed. We keep them, uh, we want to keep them in the loop. What it means to excel, what it means to become an athlete mm -hmm. with their mother as an example. So these things, we, we, you know, not easy with COVID, but this is something that we try to 
reiterate all the time. And I think our kids, in terms of the participation, I mean, they, they, they are good swimmers. Okay. So I think we try to train them. We try to, not, not, not with any aim, not with the aim that you need to be an elite athlete, but I think it trains their kind of will and spirit as well. I think it's mm -hmm. important. You know, I, I, I enrolled my son into a fencing competition. Okay. And the first few times, he lost. Mm -hmm. And he was very upset. He was crying. You know, he always wants to do the best. But through these experiences, you, we as parents, we have to tell them, see, uh, mom, you know, she doesn't always win. Mm -hmm. She lost right. countless uh -huh. times right. before, before reaching the top. Yeah. So, you know, we tell them these stories and they, they would feel what it means to compete. They would feel what it means to win, what it means to lose. So these are things that, you know, I think it takes time. I think as parents, we don't want to be forcing them to, oh, why you, why you, why you don't win a medal? Why you don't win a certificate? You need to do this, you need to do this. Not just to force them. Do you want to listen to, do you want to hear a very funny story about, about uh, Of course, this I can. Gold medal? Come on, give it to us. Actually, it's quite funny. Okay. You know, when she um, won the gold medal, do you remember who presented to her? My father. Oh, really? Remember? <laughs> Yes, when, uh, okay. but the uh, story behind this is quite funny because um, my father being a LC member, uh, they, they, they have the duty and job yeah, to mm -hmm. present the medals right, to right. all the different athletes. So normally it's an LC member plus a International Federation member yeah, yeah, to I do have, the presentation. Uh, and he wasn't, he wasn't supposed to be presenting for diving. And, and then he got a phone call. Mm. Someone wanted to swap with him. Mm. He said, uh, Mr. Falk, would you would you want to swap with me? I want to you know, present for, say, table tennis, I've forgotten. Would you want to go diving? So he thought for a little while, and he called me, and he says, I know Jing Jing is competing. Is she going to win? <laughs> I see. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like uh, I cannot give you a definitive answer, <laughs> but I do hope so, mm -hmm. <laughs> because, of course, she wants to uh, present the winning, winning medal. But, but I said, take the risk. I think... I have confidence that she'll win. So the, 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 it turned out that way, luckily. Uh -huh. And then these are the, the medals that you know, my father presented to. Yeah, your presented father presented to, to Jing Jing. To Jing Jing, yeah, yeah. On, 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 uh -huh. on, on, on live TV. <laughs> wow, wonderful. Thank you, uh, Kenneth, for sharing this uh, wonderful story with our audience. Yes, yes, yes. So I think, uh, you know, I, what, what I would say is when we look at competitions, yeah. let's just not think about the winning moment. Let's think about where these people, what they gone through, mm -hmm. what they sacrificed, what they gave, gave up in order to reach that. I think the journey would move the audience mm -hmm. more so than just the winning moment. Now we come to one of our favorite segments. <laughs> Most difficult segment. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid fire <laughs> questions. I will be asking you some quick and fun questions and you just answer what comes up to your mind first. Okay. What is your favorite sport to play? Mountain biking. Surprise, huh? What is your favorite Hong Kong food? Beef and satay with Noodle, instant noodles. Huh? Yeah. But no soup. Uh, what is the talents you wish you had? Uh, I wish I could read faster. So that a lot of LegCo oh, <laughs> documents I, uh, I uh -huh. could uh, read quickly. And photographic memories, I don't forget them. Where is your favorite place in Hong Kong? Maybe Sai Kong. Okay. Uh, Beautiful very different. place. Yeah. People don't, don't associate Sai Kong with Hong Kong, but it's, it's peaceful. What is your proudest moment? It has to be the uh, 2008 Beijing Olympics okay. at the stadium yeah. where 60,000 all cheered. I think that's... What is the nicest thing someone have said to you? You work very hard. <laughs> you work very hard. What was the last thing you searched online? Plane tickets, but far too expensive <laughs> and all booked out. So if that, that's, not very, that's not very successful search. What would be the title of your autobiography? I'm not done yet. Okay. <laughs> the first half. <laughs> what are the qualities you admire most about your parents? Uh, my mom is very caring. She always uh, very gracious and uh, still tries to teach me, even though mm. I'm uh, forty something. <laughs> uh, my father's very creative. They all are. Uh, very yeah. creative. Uh, my father's got a lot of big ideas, and so and then he just he mm. throws me the ideas to try to execute them, which is not easy. <laughs> what is your biggest fear? 
biggest fear, not living up to expectation and the roller coaster. What horrible, a... horrible experience with the pirate ship in Ocean Park. Okay. <laughs> <When young. laughs> okay, what uh, advice would you give to your younger self? Should go, go out there more, you know. Uh, university should have joined more debate society, mm. uh, made more friends. How can your profession influence the future? Well, I'm a legislative member, legislative council member. So hopefully, you know, we can change uh, legislation or even push the government to to make sports a a a, a more uh, important role in society. How will Hong Kong look like in uh, five years' time? Do you think, Kenneth? Very bright. I think um, we've just had our 25th year uh, return to motherland, mm -hmm. and I believe five years down the line. No matter from sporting events, business, international tourism, I'm sure it will be as vibrant as ever. So I, I look forward to that. And hopefully we can have more major sports events in Hong Kong. Right. Yes. Thank you. Kenneth, can you please share with us your suggestions or well wishes for Hong Kong? Well, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish everyone, of course, most importantly, is best of health. You know, we are coming out from a pandemic that has clouded us for over two years, nearly three years now. I think it's time for us to look beyond that and to take action and to work together to make a better Hong Kong, no matter in sports or in culture or in all fields. I think business will be bright and I think Hong Kong's economy is strong. Let's work together and wish Hong Kong the best. Thank you for joining us on Friday Beyond Spotlight. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Herman. Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, look at this uh, wonderful stadium. Retractable roof and removable turf. Yeah, Herman, it's no longer a dream, right? We've yeah. dreamt about this for many years, <laughs> and finally it's coming to fruition. Yeah. Besides the roof and the turf, the, I think the most amazing part about this is the glass facade at the back. Mm -hmm. what, what represents Hong Kong better than Victoria Harbour? Having a stadium next to a harbour, but it's see-through. So imagine you're sitting inside, you can see the harbour from inside the stadium. Wow. So I think this is something that's going to be very unique in the world of stadiums. Yeah. So when the World Cup comes, let's go together, sit in the middle, in the front row, to witness history being made. Kenneth, it's a date. Definitely. And I'm sure that that, that day will come soon. Wonderful. <laughs>